Welcome to Bio 117 Online. My name is Susan Carboni and I will be your instructor for this course. Some of you took Anatomy and Physiology uh, 1 online last semester and so you may not need everything in this podcast. but for those of you that did not take A&P online last semester, I'm going to go through what is involved in taking this online class. What I've done is I've already logged on to cmconnect.cmcc.edu. That is where your uh, classroom will be in an eraser site. Most of you are very familiar with that site. So once you log on to CM Connect, down here on the left-hand side where the little hand is, is My Courses. So you click on My Courses and you will find all the courses that you are registered for. So I'm going to enter the 117 classroom. Now, the, uh, one of the most important things for you to do is to find and read the syllabus. So over here, the very top link is the syllabus link. Once you find it, I'm going to change my page to look like a student. Okay, once you find this link, I usually right-click on it and I open in a new window and click OK. The top part of the syllabus uh, tells you about the course number, my name, Susan Carboni, my email address, and a phone number where you can reach me. I um, communicate with my students almost exclusively by email. The top part of the syllabus I will let you read on your own. There are some student learning objectives. They're very generic. There are much uh, more detailed objectives on the eraser site that I'll point out to you a little later. These are the chapter topics that we will talk about. This is a very important part of the syllabus. It tells you the textbook if you took Bio 115. Um, last semester or another semester, we're using um, the second half of that book. We're using edition nine, although others would be acceptable. But you do need to have access to the Mastering AMP website. Uh, if you don't have that, if you didn't get that along with your textbook, if you had to buy one new for this semester, you will need access to the MasteringAMP.com site. And you will uh, once you. Um, go to that site. If you didn't get an access code with your textbook, you can purchase one there. I also recommend that you work in an optional um, anatomy and physiology guide. Uh, it has great exercises to help you learn the material. But again, that purchase and use is optional. The code on the masteringamp.com site that you will need this semester for your uh, homework, to do your homework, is Bio 117 Carboni Online. And you will find that access code on the website as well. If you're in Bio 117, you should have already taken Bio 115, 116. Hopefully, at this point, you've learned how to study. But this section of the syllabus goes over some ideas um, for how you might want to organize the material so that you can learn it. Contact the instructor mostly by email, although I will mention at this point that I am going to be offering what are called Adobe Connect sessions. In those sessions, we both log on to a, a same, the same internet site. Uh, you will be able to see me and hear me, and we can chat. So you can text me uh, in the chat box and get your questions answered, and also um, we, I have some activities planned for those sessions. I will let you know about those sessions by email. And by the way, that brings up a very important topic, which is that you have all been given a campus email address. You can find instructions about how to access that and set up your password if you click on the Student tab at the top of the CM Connect page. You can also have your campus email forwarded to a personal email if you don't want to have to check that email specifically. But that is the way I'm going to communicate with you very often. Aside from what I post on the Eraser site, having that email address set up is very, and checking it, um, I would recommend daily, is very, very important. 
You can communicate to me uh, and other students uh, from the Eraser site. I will show you how to do that. You can contact other, or email other uh, students. You can email me through that site as well. Okay, this section pretty much summarizes what the course will involve. Uh, the very beginning of the course, you're going to need to uh, read the syllabus. I also recommend that you print it out in case you need to transfer this course somewhere and they want to see if it uh, fits the course that you, you want to get credit for at another school. So on a weekly basis, what you'll be doing is um, reading the chapter and watching vodcasts. The vodcasts are uh, what's ever on my uh, desktop, usually PowerPoint slides, and my voice explaining what's in the chapter. Then once you read the chapter, you will be working on the MasteringAMP.com site to complete your homework. There's a homework um, assignment for every chapter, and then you will have um, a quiz to take on every chapter. So the homework is due on Sunday nights, the quizzes are due on Monday nights. Uh, then twice in the semester you will be taking uh, two exams, a midterm and a final, and they're quite um, challenging. So this is why I recommend that you take the time to organize the information, make your own study guides, whatever flashcards you're going to need to prepare for the midterm and the final as you do each chapter. If you wait until the week before the midterm to try and get your study guides together for each chapter, it will be overwhelming. Now there are three options in taking the proctored midterm and the proctored final. You may come onto campus during exam week and I will get you that schedule about two or three weeks before the midterm and the final and take it on campus. You may also use an off-site proctor, but if you do that, you're going to have to get that proctor approved and the process for doing that will be explained to you a little later in the semester. You may also use an online service called ProctorU, but I will tell you right up front that it will cost you $25 per exam to use ProctorU, which you do at home using your own computer. So those are the three options for taking care of the proctored exams. Most students come to uh, campus, but not all do, so be thinking about that. So it is a requirement that you take both the midterm and the final, which are proctored exams. So down here is how I will calculate your final grade in Bio 117. The average of the two exams, the midterm and the final, are actually 70% of your grade. So that should indicate to you that preparing for those two major exams is very important in terms of doing well in this class. 10% of your grade is based on homework. 15% of your grade is based on quizzes, and there are two writing assignments, they're case studies, they're 5% of your grade. So that's how your final grade will be calculated. There is no extra credit for this class. I need you to do well in the assignments as I've set them up. Everything that you do in this course will have a numerical grade. The letter grade that corresponds to that numerical grade is in this section. I'm going to take you directly to the Eraser homepage and go over how to uh, navigate through there. So I'm not going to read to you that navigational um, section. And then getting to class pretty much um, goes over what you'll be doing during the week. And it also talks about some of the study aids uh, that you have. I'm going to go over those from the Eraser site itself and how to view the vodcasts. This is going over the exams again. It reiterates the information about uh, proctoring and this last, last section here talks about if you have technical difficulties, you may contact our uh, IT department. The email address is here, the phone number is here. We do now have, this is actually dated, we do now have somebody who will be there until 8 p.m. Um, starting this semester, so uh, that 4.30 should have been changed. Then, what's very important is the schedule. 
So this is going to indicate to you what you need to work on each week. I will also take this information and put due dates on it and put it right on the eraser page. And I'll get to that in a little bit. So what you will be working on each week is very detailed and put together in the schedule. So I recommend that you have that printed out and you use that as your Bible. There's some additional information at the end here. They're mostly administrative things, withdrawals, incompleteness, uh, plagiarism, and disability access, affirmative action, I'll let you read, ethical behavior, and netiquette, how to behave in an online class. So I will let you read all of that on your own. So I'm going to minimize that and get us back to the eraser page. So um, one of the things about eraser is that if you use the back button up here, very often it boots you out of the course. So I recommend that you use the breadcrumbs at the top. So I'm going to click on that link, which will bring us back to the major page. There is an introductory statement here that you should read. Then I will be placing this vodcast that I'm making in this slot right here. Below this is what I call the blog section. I have already put in what is due for this coming week and when the deadlines are, what you need to be working on. Next week, you will find this blog at the top of the page. So it will be the first thing that you see when you log on. And you should make sure that if all of the information is not on the page, from, for instance, view more posts, uh, just make sure that everything you need to know uh, is visible to you because sometimes the posts have some uh, hidden information because they can't put it all in that square. All right, so what else do you have on this site? Let's go back to the main page. Over here is a discussion um, of the Mastering AMP website and how you get your course ID number. The course ID number is bolded here, and you can click on any of these blue links to get to the Mastering site. This site is uh, provided to you by your um, publisher. Okay. Um, over here on the left-hand side, let's go over the vodcast. So vodcast 2014 lectures. In order to view the vodcast, we're going to be starting with chapter 15. Um, you click on the vodcast link, then you click on the blue link for 15A. So 15, chapter 15 is pretty lengthy. It has four vodcasts. Uh, this one happens to be about a half an hour. Okay, we don't need to listen to that now, but that's how you would play the vodcast. If you want to view it full screen, click on that, and you can always get out of there by pressing escape. If you would like uh, the text, I'm sorry, the speech to be converted to text, you can uh, click on CC for closed caption. And let's get back. So all the vodcasts for the semester are there. Um, just scroll down the page and you will see all of those podcasts. I highly recommend that you listen to those because that will clue you into how in-depth I expect you to know the information in this class. Now, some of these study tools that you have. What I recommend is that you print out the text from the PowerPoint slides and have them in front of you and take notes on them. You will find those under Lecture Outlines. So if you click on Lecture Outlines, and then I right click on 15A. And here is the 15A vodcast, the text of all the slides. You have the pictures in your book. I will be presenting the pictures, so you don't really need them in front of you. The reason I think these are a great idea is it helps you to set up that study guide that I keep talking about to have ready for. Um, the midterm and the final. And you can take notes on these as you are listening to the vodcast. Not all of the detail that you need um, is in these text slides, and I very often mention sections that are more important than others, so you can do some scratching out. Um, so it's very useful to have those in front of you. So there's one of those for every vodcast.
You don't have to listen to the entire vodcast in one sitting. Some of them are quite lengthy. You can stop them. They're YouTube videos. You can stop them. You can come back, fast forward to where you left off and continue watching them. They do, they may close out on you every 15 minutes or so, so I recommend that you move your mouse every once in a while while you're watching those podcasts. Okay, I also give you the PowerPoint presentations in PDF file, meaning there's six slides per page. So once that loads, oh, there they are. Um, right click on 15A, I'll open in a new window and show you what those look like. So there's six slides per page. This is what I will be presenting to you. And this presentation of the PowerPoints has the pictures in there. Again, you've got all these pictures in your textbook as well. So if you find that useful, um, this is the same text you will find in the outlines. But if you find this a more useful format, you certainly may um, have access to those. Okay, the other very important um, set of files that you have are called chapter objectives. This is how you'll figure out what it is you have to know for each chapter for quizzes and for the midterm and final. So it's set up by chapter and this we're going to start with chapter 15. So it tells you, for instance, for chapter 15, I envision, describe the structure and function of the accessory, eye structures, eye layers, the lens, and the humors of the eye. Okay, very important to know. So in preparing for quizzes and exams, you might want to write out answers to those. You want to make sure that all the information is on your notes and your PowerPoint outlines. Whatever uh, it takes for you to know this information, this is what you need to know. So you have one of those objective files for each chapter. Now, you will be doing homework on the Mastering AMP site. You will be taking quizzes and your midterm and final from this site. The midterm and the final will be proctored. Your quizzes are not. And so to take a quiz, you can do one of two things. The blog area, which I'll move up to the top of the page, as I mentioned before, uh, for instance, quiz zero. Um, oh, you don't take quiz zero. Never mind that. OK, so next week, you will see a link in the blog section to um, quiz number one. And so another way you can take quiz number one is to click on the coursework page And um, you will see, scroll down until you find, hmm, OK. Well, that's not good. Just quickly go see. I'm going to go back to the faculty view. I apparently have not given you visibility for the quizzes. So just bear with me for a minute. Oh, I'm already there. And OK. So I'm just going to make that visible. And I'm just going to go set a deadline really quickly just so that you can see what it looks like. That will be due January 27th. Okay, I'm going to go back to the student view. You'll be able to see at least one quiz. So what's due next will always be at the top of the page, but you will also see it under quizzes. So you can either click on that link or this link. Once you click on the link, it will tell you how long you have for this quiz. Uh, you will have 30 minutes. You may take it one time. It will be There are typically 20 questions scored out of 100. And when you're ready to start the quiz, you click here. You will only be able to allow to allowed to take it once, so make sure you're ready to stay the entire 30 minutes, because if you back out of the quiz or submit the quiz, then you won't be able to get back in. 
Okay, so that's where you take quizzes. Again, homework is on the Mastering a and site. And the grade book. The grade book is where you'll be able to go see your grades, um, depending on what you've taken. Um, there aren't grades inserted in here yet. First of all, that's me, and I haven't taken anything. So you can check back here to see what your grade is as the uh, semester progresses. A couple of um, other, uh, oh, I was going to show you um, how to email me and other classmates. If you click on classmates, you will see a list of the um, students in the class. And you will see me somewhere here. There I am, OK, with my new Luna. And so if you wanted to email me from here, you would just click that and scroll down. And you would use the option of email selected members. You can email all students. You can click some of the students if you want to email them. That is a, a mode of communication that you are free to use. OK, and then I was going to tell you about the fact that there uh, is a page here of useful videos. I am building those this semester, so I will, uh, you will start to see some videos available to you uh, for Chapter 15 uh, by next week. And I'm also going to be building a page that has useful websites. That They may be generic websites. They may be specific to certain chapters. Um, but I will start to build those. So that's basically uh, what's on your course page and how you navigate it. If you have any problems at all, please email me at scarboni at cmcc.edu. And hopefully um, you will do well. I wish you all the best.